Welcome. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are so glad that you are joining with us this part of God's people to praise God, to be open to God's Word, to, to be strengthened in our faith. Welcome. We are glad you are with us. Now, I need to say something because we record this service on the Monday prior to the Sunday service, which means that the service yesterday could not have included anything about the awful events in Washington on January the 6th. That was a very painful experience. Many of us remember the Murrah building bombing 25 or so years ago in Oklahoma City. Uh, most everyone remembers 9-11 and the uh, destruction of the towers in New York and the attack on the Pentagon. But in some ways, the attack on the Capitol was, was much, much more devastating. A few people were killed, not anything like on 9-11, but it was an attack on the government and the people of the United States. The chief of police said that those people were not simply demonstrators or protesters. They had come prepared to break into the Capitol. They had ropes, they had uh, uh, gasoline, they had all kinds of things. And someone made a gallows with a noose. What, what in the world were they thinking of? This was indeed an insurrection. This was an attempt to take over the United States. It, it was an awful day. It was an awful day. But we need to remember, as we have been experiencing the pandemic, as we've been experiencing the, the, uh, the, the awful effects in the economy, as we have been experiencing all the political unrest, that God is still with us, even, even so. The hymn says, O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our help through the stormy blast, our eternal home. God is our refuge and strength. So as we come together to worship today, remember Emmanuel, God is with us in Jesus Christ. Amen.
Join me in the call to worship. Praise the God of all creation. Worship the one who calls us, speaking with a different voice, offering an unexpected invitation. Celebrate the presence of our loving God. Rejoice, the realm of God is near. Let us join together in the prayer of confession and hear assurance of God's pardon. Let us pray to the one who stands ready to forgive. O oh God, we pour out our hearts to you. Receive the pain that lurks in our humanity as we offer up what we have hidden from ourselves and from the world those words and deeds that keep us separated from your love. Help us be like the people of Nineveh, open to your healing presence. Jesus calls us to repent and draw near to him. In Christ Jesus, we are made whole. 
Alleluia. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Amen. <laughs>1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 10 Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli the word of the Lord was rare in those days visions were not widespread at that time Eli whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see was lying down in his room the lamp of God had not yet gone out and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. And when Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, 
where are you staying? And Jesus said to them, come and see. So they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. Now, it was about four o'clock in the afternoon, and one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. So he brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. So then the next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Now Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And Jesus said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Here ends our reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 35 through the end of the chapter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Everyone has own special meaning of a new year. New year is a new beginning, a new start, also new hope. New year for Korean is different meaning of special because Korean has not only two new year, New Year's Day and Luna New Year, but also we have to add up one more age to our current age. No birthday different, no have to waiting until birthday. Every Korean have to add up one year to their age, which means getting older. When I was young, when I was young, plus one to my age was not a big deal. But, when I'm getting older, oh, it makes a lot of difference. I can feel uncomfortable from my joint, back, and shoulders. My morning is different than last year. And I realize that today is the youngest day of my life. In this youngest day of our life. We should think about we still have the work order, which is still in the shade. This work order 
can finish easier before we are getting too much older. And what kind of this work order now I'm talking about? Let's find out together today. In John chapter 1, verse 35 through 51, we can see how Jesus start his work. When Jesus came down to be our neighbors, he started his mission in a very special way. After his baptism, he went to the temple and warned the people, Heaven is near, so wake up and pray, repentant. Sounds like there will be a big miracle coming from heaven. Son of God, shout out and say, your end is near. But, but, after Jesus announced in public, he left the temple and started to call the people. Jesus is God, so he can do it by himself. He has no limit, but he wants to call people. He wants to work with his neighbor and wants to be happen not by godly hand, but in human's hand. From this beginning, we can see how God works in us. God wants us to work for people, rising them up from their wounded, weak, and depressed. God can do it by himself, but he wants us to care of others' sickness and scars. He wants us to learn the importance of the value of someone's life. God wants us to call the people as Jesus did. Think about this. When we wake up in the morning and check your cell phone, you may notice that you receive many notifications during your night. And most are came from social media. People use social media to raise up self's value and want to impress others recently. Take a picture and upload it and to show I can do these valuable things because I'm worthy. I'm so valuable. Please see what I eat. Please see what I do. Please see, please see what I can do these fancy things. But Jesus did not show his identity in the public, in temple. Even he did not use his almighty power to impress others. He could do self-increasing and show how he is valuable in there, how he is important to us. But instead of showing him, he calls others. Choose others to increase others' values. There are many people appear in John chapter 1, verse 35 through 51, and I want to introduce each of them and how Jesus react with them. First, John of Baptist. When John of Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Here is the Lamb of God. If you are Jewish and no Passover, the meaning of Lamb of God is easily to understand. Lamb of God means Jesus is the ransom of humanity's sin. Jesus will sacrifice himself for humankind. Jesus is the one who John of Baptist is speaking for. John of Baptist defined Jesus' identity saying, here is the Lamb of God. When we look at John of Baptist carefully, we find his character. He is not great. He is with Andrew and John when he saw Jesus. What does it mean, weed? Weed means Andrew and John are the most Blind student of John of Baptist. 
If I were him, I will raise my value and impress my most loved and brilliant student. May I say, Jesus seemed great and he is Lamb of God, but you guys have to stay with me and learn from me. But John says, you should follow, you should follow Jesus instead of me. Jesus is the one who you have to focus on. Jesus is the one you are wearing. John of Baptist is not only defined who Jesus is, but also transmit his best achievement to Jesus. Mark, Matthew, and Luke describe that Jesus called to people on his way. Follow me is the famous word when Jesus called others. However, the Gospel of John clear to say that he and Andrew were students of John of Baptist and they are his legacy. We know how this is difficult. Let me give an example. If you are the owner of a big restaurant and say to your new customer, I am good at steak, but on the next block, there has better dishes than I have. Or if you are minister of a mega church and say to the newcomer, My church is great, but if you want to hear the better sermon, you should go to the church across from here. John of Baptist gives up his most valuable and his whole life achievement for Jesus. He knew how important Jesus is, and he gives up his achievement for that importance. Now there are Andrew and John. What was their first question? Levi, where are you staying? Jesus asked them what, are, what they are looking for. And they asked to Jesus, where are you living? Jesus answered them, come and see. So they stay with Jesus, spend the night with him. They observe and had a conversation with Jesus and learn from Jesus. And Jude and John are close to their truth their Messiah, and stay with him, and learn, and check. They, <clears throat> they want to know why this guy is so important. After they stay a night, they had any regret about what they choose. They met a world, the eternal truth, and met their God. I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently find me. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. After Andrew met the Messiah, he ran to Simon and expressed the joy of meeting the Messiah. He ran over and spoke this good news to Simon. I want to ask you this question. When you meet the Messiah, what will you do next? Even when you find a delicious restaurant or coffee shop or a secret place in a town, we ran over to our friends or write down on SNS to what you find out. Right? What about you when you have met the Messiah? Can you stay? Or can you learn to your friends and say about who do you meet? And you bring Simon to Jesus. And Jesus say to Simon, You will call to be Kepha, the foundation of the church. Who is Simon? He is an emotionally instability person. He is easy to anger and he is a person who acts 
first and think later. But Jesus called him to be the cornerstone of the church. Jesus knows Simon's past, present, and future. But Jesus is not focusing on Simon's past or present. He focuses on his future, his possibility, and his passion. Here is a difference between God and people. God does not care someone's past who is still in sin or in doomed, but look out, but look at person's future who will repent and reconnect with God and his plan. Now, now we have a Philip. Who is this guy, Philip? He lived in Bethsaida, a neighborhood village of Nazareth. Now we can see Jesus' first call is his neighbor. The people from his closest place in his area. Then Philip ran to his best friend Nathaniel, same as Andrew did. We find two parts here. There are come and see part and go part. Come and see, learn, hear, and recognize who I met. And go to speak who did you meet to your friend, your family, and your neighbor. Philip follow this method very well. He comes to Jesus, see what happened, and goes to his friend Nathaniel. Nathaniel name means God's gift. Nathaniel wants to live as his name means. He is the man who follows the rule and enjoys to find the truth. When Philip talked about Messiah to Nathaniel, his first reaction is asking question, where? He is a very knowledgeable person. He knows many things. And this knowledgeable person's first question is what Jesus' background is. Nazareth is a narrow great place. Near Nazareth, near Nazareth there were Roman army fortresses, many construction, construction places, and close to war ground. It is a place like a slam or a town with poverty. Nathaniel does not believe Jesus is the Messiah from his knowledge. But when Jesus met him, Jesus said, you are truly an Israel in whom there is no deceit. Jesus know how Nathaniel think about him. Jesus know what he talking to Philips. But Jesus see the inside of Nathaniel's goodness. Nathaniel asked, how did you know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. The fig tree is meaningful here because Talmud taught that Jewish should read the Torah under the tree once a day. So in modern time, he read the Bible under the tree every day and follow the teaching and Jewish tradition. So Jesus called him, You are truly Israelite who follow teaching of Talmud. He points out Nathaniel's devotional life. And you know, Nathaniel getting happy, so excited. And he speak, wow, this Messiah knows my devotional life. He suddenly surprised and praised to Jesus. Teacher, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Then Jesus made him cool down. Jesus says, faith is not only a surprise what you can see now. 
Faith is not only you tear down or your heart getting warmer now. Faith is your strength to see greater things, to see God's plan, the plan with greater than I can only imagine. What are these greater things? Let's find out in John chapter 1, verse 50 and 51. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than here. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Jesus used the word Son of Man. The Son of Man used the vision of Daniel's coming Messiah. On Daniel chapter 7, 13, he said, as I watched in the night vision, so one like a human being coming with the cloud of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. Coming with the cloud of heaven is similar concept of Jacob's letter in Genesis. Jacob sees how heaven open and angels are going up and down. And Jesus introduced himself as this letter using the familiar term, familiar concept of Israelite. I am here to connect between humans and God, like a letter, so you also can see the heavens open. The angels are going up and down, so you can call God as your father because there is a letter and see the greater things in your life. If we live with this letter, we need to allow the Messiah into our lives. Then we will see the greater things and our purpose of life will be changed increasing my value to increasing others' value. We are still living in very difficult time, still in pandemic, mask and economic and political difficulties. Are you still find the truth in midst of uncertainties? Do you want to see greater things in your life? If you accept Christ, it is only one purpose of your life. If you hold this truth in your life, then you will have the experience of meeting Jesus. Your life will be changed and you will say, Come and see to your friend and family, and your life will be full of greater things which you cannot imagine before. In John chapter 1 verse 35 through 51, there are many different people appeared. John, Andrew, Philips, Nathaniel, and Simon. None of them are having perfect character and lives. But Jesus called them, which is not for their possibility, but also their wounded, picky character and messed lives. The greater things happened when these non-perfect people are gathered and work for God's purpose, increasing others and decreasing myself. I pray in this year, in this new year, you can have full of experience of working God's order, 
meet him in person and have more chance to speak to others. Come and see. Here is a truth you are looking for. And you will see greater things in your life. Let us pray, shall we? O oh God, Heavenly Father, when we are living in this world, our way is going to human thought, not yours. When we turn on the TV, there are still many difficulties, uncertainty, and depression. Help us, Lord. Help us to seek your way to wisdom, your experience, and seeking you in our daily lives. So we also can see the greater things in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
In Christ, we are one family. And in Christ, you will see the greater things in your daily life. With Christ, you, I hope your daily life with lots of blessing and wondrous thing in your day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and communion and fellowship with our Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forever. Amen.